How to plan a boudoir photo shoot. So you're planning a boudoir photo shoot, but where do you begin? Well, I've done hundreds and hundreds of shoots over the last 12 years, and I'm gonna tell you how to plan the perfect shoot. So make sure you watch till the end, because the last one is super important. Hello, my name is Mike Lloyd. I am a professional photographer in Silicon Valley, California. I've been doing boudoir full time since 2015 and then shooting families, high school seniors and couples for five years before that. So I photographed a lot of people. I've done a lot of different kinds of shoots, indoors, outdoors. I've traveled across the country for them. I have done commercial gigs that you might have seen, uh, movie covers on Netflix, album covers. I have done a lot of different kinds of work. I'm really good at planning this stuff and bringing a creative vision together. That's why why this video is going to be so helpful for you because this is my jam. This is my happy place. I love producing photo shoots. I'm going to give you five things to consider when planning your boudoir shoot so that it is absolutely perfect. Number one, pick a photographer who's going to help you plan. Number two, hair and makeup. Number three is wardrobe. Number four, the three ingredients of preparation. Stay with me. This one's a biggie. And number five, trusting the process. Okay, pick a photographer who's going to help you plan. There's a lot of work that goes into planning a boudoir shoot, but you shouldn't have to do most of it. Honestly, if you are hiring a photographer, make sure they have a preparation guide. They can tell you how to pick clothes. What about the hair and makeup process? When do you show up? How long will everything take? How will you receive all the things? They should have this down already. So if you're working with a photographer who's like, I don't know, just wear whatever you feel like, then probably not going to be your photographer. And if, you know, they give you hair and makeup instructions, like just, you know, show up ready, not helpful at all. That's like, oh, cool. What pose should I do? You know, just, just be yourself. That means nothing, zero help there. So hire a photographer who's actually going to help you plan. That is going to make your life so much easier because there shouldn't be very much guesswork. You should just be able to follow their directions, show up and find success. All right, number two, hair and makeup. This one I love because your photographer might provide a stylist already. I know I do, it's a non-negotiable. It's included in all my sessions. A lot of boudoir photographers work this way for a couple of reasons. One, it's just part of the experience and I want you to come in, have a glass of Prosecco or bubbly water, relax and get pampered for an hour and a half because that warm up time is gonna help you feel so much more ready for the photos than if you just walk in the door and you're supposed to take your clothes off for the camera. It really helps just ease everyone into the photo shoot. Also, a professional stylist will know what kind of hair and makeup to do that looks good on camera because photo makeup is not the same makeup you wear when you're going out for dinner. It's closer to stage makeup and no one ever puts on enough makeup for it to show up in the photos. If you've been married before and you looked in the mirror and you're like, holy smokes, I look like a clown. This is so much makeup. But then you see the photos and it looks totally normal. That's why I provide my own hair and makeup during the photo shoots. And when I mean my own, I don't do it because you don't need that. Uh, but I have a stylist who's really, really talented and they do the hair and makeup as well. Plus, they know how to work with different skin types and colors and all different things. So I know no matter who walks into my studio, we're gonna do amazing hair and makeup for them. And as far as preparing goes, wash your hair the day before the photo shoot because you don't want wet or greasy hair when you walk into the session. And then moisturize your face day of, but don't put any other makeup or product on your face. Let the professional do what they do because they're gonna have a workflow that is designed to work with the photographer. Number three is planning wardrobe. This, another one of my faves. In my studio, there's no dress code. You can wear whatever you want. We do shoots where someone's fully clothed the whole time. We do shoots where someone's not clothed at all any of the time. It's entirely up to my client. I recommend wearing whatever you feel good in or whatever you want to feel good in. Traditionally, boudoir is done in lingerie, but it doesn't have to be because sexy can mean anything to anyone and it doesn't just have to be wearing underwear. You can wear, you know, jeans and a cute top or your favorite dress you wear out on date nights. Uh, I photograph clients in their wedding dresses and, you know, uh, exercise outfits. If you just achieved the significant fitness goal in your life and you feel really empowered wearing this particular workout outfit, I 1000% want you to bring that to the photo shoot because that's the energy 
I want to capture. That is strong and confident and powerful, and that translates to sexy without having to be in sexy clothes. So be open-minded when choosing your wardrobe. Also, keep everything wrinkle-free because we cannot always Photoshop things. And I tell you, I sure don't want to Photoshop wrinkles out of 100 photos at the end of a photo shoot. That's why I keep a steamer here just in case and an iron, but it would be better if everything was already hung up on hangers and wrinkle free. So please keep that in mind when planning your outfits and packing them. Also bring more than you think you're going to need. We do four to five outfits during my sessions. So I recommend bringing seven or eight things because when you pack, you're going to be in one mindset. And when you're here in the studio, you'll be in a totally different mindset. And I don't want you to feel like, you're stuck having to wear something because it made sense at the time, but now you're really not feeling it, but that's all we got. So bringing extra outfits gives us the chance to be more flexible at the photo shoot. Also, not everything photographs as well. So if you're like, hey, I love this outfit, uh, let's do it. And I look at it like, mm, that fabric is gonna leave wavy lines all over you and reflect the light all wonky. It's not gonna look good. You're like, cool, no problem. I have these other three options that we can do because you planned ahead of time High five to you. All right, number four, the big three in preparation, food, sleep, and water, the basics to keep you alive, but they are really, really important when it comes to preparing for your photo shoot. You might be thinking, yeah, but I want to plan the photo shoot, not necessarily think about this prep stuff, but plan for these things. If you've got a party the night before your photo shoot, schedule your photo shoot for another day. Give your photographer a ton of notice or don't go to the party. You know, one of my clients this last year races motocross. She scheduled her shoot two days after a race. I'm like, what if you fall? And she did. And she had road rash all over one of her legs. So in the shoot, we had to turn her one direction the entire time. I couldn't shoot this side and show from the waist down because of the bruises and the scabs on her legs. So plan accordingly when you book your photo shoot. Get plenty of sleep the night before because bags under the eyes and like glassy eyes and looking hungover, not very photogenic. Also, drink a ton of water. If you have to make 10 bathroom trips during the photo shoot, great, I don't care. But if you take off an outfit and it leaves stripes and lines all over you, then you put the next outfit on and I can see where the previous clothes were, that's gonna show up in all the photos. So drinking plenty of water gives that elasticity to your skin, it makes you glow, and you'll just feel better. So, and then food. Hangry doesn't look good on anyone. I have these in capital letters, in bold, taking up two full pages in my prep guide. Like you, you see the whole spread and then you turn the page and it says it again because it's that important. You gotta eat before your photo shoot. Maybe not an entire pizza or don't, you know, hit the Taco Bell drive through on the way here because just no good is gonna come from that. But please eat, have something. Not having food on the day of your shoot is 100% going to kill your energy level and it will absolutely show up in the photos if you're looking tired. Uh, and again, hangry, irritable, we don't need that. You don't need that, no one needs that. So sleep, food, and water, game changers. Number five, nervous is normal, trust the process. So when my clients come in here, sometimes they're like pacing around or not making eye contact, hands are shaking, or like nervously clutching water bottle and phone and keys and all kinds of stuff. Nervous is totally normal. I have photographed professional singers who have been in arenas full of thousands and thousands of fans and they're front and center on stage with the big screens behind them, just as nervous in front of my camera as anyone else who walks in this door. I photographed professional dancers and athletes who are terrified to be in front of the camera, but they'll stand on the field in front of tens of thousands of people and on television, perform no problem. So nervous is normal. Everyone feels it before a shoot. So just trust the process. Does it feel weird to prep your hair and your makeup like I suggested? Maybe. The poses feel really awkward? Probably. They should. That's how they look good. All of these things that we talk about are totally not normal things that we do in our day-to-day -day life, but trust the process because it's like cooking. You know, you've got to like chop everything up and make it look kind of disorganized and scattered and broken up, but then it all comes together in this beautiful dish at the end and everyone is happy. Again, choose a photographer who's going to help guide you through all of this and trust 
the process. You got this. So those are my five tips for preparing for your photo shoot. Number one, choose a photographer who's going to help you plan. Number two, hair and makeup. Number three, plan your wardrobe. Four, the big three, food, water, and sleep. And number five, it's okay to be normal, just trust the process. I've got some other great videos on this channel about how to find the perfect photographer for you. So be sure to subscribe and check those out. And if you're like, Mike, you seem like you got your shit together. I think I just want to book you. That's amazing. Head to MikeLloydStudios.com. You can book a consult with me there and I would love to put together a session for you. You are amazing. See you soon. Yeah.